Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I actually want to address something that I read on the internet yesterday. I was reading through some comments on one of my videos, and someone had come in and they had said, you know, it's easy to see why gun uh, people are such big supporters of Donald Trump because he's racist and you're all racist. So uh, I want to kind of address that today. You know, there are a lot of gun people, a lot of people in the gun community that do support Trump. Now, I have never been one of the people that actually just love Trump because I think it's weird to really be that enamored by a politician or anyone in the position of power. I think it makes you overlook things a little too much when you like somebody too much, which is why I think a lot of people in the gun community kind of overlooked when Trump said, take their guns first and give them due process later. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I want to talk about why there are so many people in the gun community that like Trump. At first off, I'm going to say, it ain't everybody. I talk to a lot of people in the gun community. It's probably about half, uh, just like it's probably was about half the country that liked Trump. And like I said, I was never a big lover of Trump, but I always thought I was fair to Trump. I think I should be that way to any American president. Fair. Call them out when they do wrong. Give them credit when they do right. But apparently there's people on both sides that never want to call out the people on their side, but they always want to praise the people on their side and vice versa, vice versa, I guess they should say. But I want to address that today. Why do so many people in the gun community seem to like Trump? Is it because all the people in the gun community are racist and Trump is racist like this person claimed? Well, I don't think that's true at all. Because for one, I know a lot of people in the gun community and I don't think the gun community is that racist, to be honest. I would say probably if you, I will, I will say that it's probably more racist than a lot of other groups, but I think every group has its racist. There's racist school teachers, racist cops, racist doctors, racist lawyers, racist gun owners, racist, uh, you know, bicycling uh, aficionados or whatever you call someone who likes to do something. Uh, there's racists everywhere, but there's just a tiny little bit of them. There's not many of them. This ain't the 50s. So I will give you, though, that there's probably more racist in the gun community than there are in some communities, but that's simply because of the, you know, some overlapping things. It's more correlation than, you know, causation, that kind of argument. So if it's like 5% of all people are racist, well, then maybe 8% of the gun community is, you know, a little higher. But still, not a lot. So I don't think that holds water, that people in the gun community tend to like Trump because he was racist, because I don't believe Trump's racist. I think Trump, in uh, this uh, manner, in this, in, when it comes to race, is a lot like me. He's not shallow enough to judge people by what color their skin is. I think he, like myself, judges people by important factors, like whether they're attractive and how much money they have. You know, things like that. Not the color of their skin or what country they're from or blah, 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 or they're gay or straight or anything like that. If you're pretty and you're rich, you're okay with me. And I think it's probably very much the same with Trump. So I don't have uh, any uh, belief that Trump is a racist. Just like I don't believe that most gun owners are racist. But I do think there are things about Trump that attract gun owners. And I think it's because he pissed off all the other politicians he pissed off the mainstream media, and we see politicians and media as the enemy because often they are the enemy of our rights and our freedoms. Politicians love to strip us of our rights. The media loves to help them because the media helps the big corporations who would also love to strip us of our rights, just like the politicians do. So when we saw Trump come into office, we saw someone who, hey, this isn't a politician. Uh, he's pissing off the other politicians. He's pissing off the media. He's going to do things different. He's taking it to the people we don't like. And I think that's what a lot of people saw in Trump initially. And also, Trump did do things differently at first. I don't think people give him enough credit for that. Because, remember, he sat down with Pelosi and Schumer. And he said, hey, let's come to an agreement. He sat in meetings and said, hey, this shouldn't be that difficult. We're not that far apart on things. Let's come together. And of course, in those meetings, he did sometimes say stupid things like take their guns now, give them due process later, even though I don't think he quite understood what he was saying. But he tried to work 
across the aisle. He tried to bring everybody together and act like this was a business, you know, and hey, we all have a common agenda to make America stronger, blah, blah, blah. And he tried. He tried. Now, you might not think he's a great politician. You may not think he's even a good person, but he tried. You can't deny that. And I think a lot of people in the gun community loved that fact that he was kind of a maverick because I think a lot of people in the gun community are kind of rebels themselves, you know. They uh, don't like the status quo. And they, like I said, don't like politicians in the media. <laughs> so they were on his side. They gave him the benefit of the doubt. Some of them, like I said, I think gave him too much of the benefit of the doubt and weren't willing to call him out when he's wrong. Because a lot of people get in this echo chamber of Trump is awesome and they're afraid to go, well, yeah, except for when he did, the, ah, Trump is awesome, rah, 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 rah. you know, that kind of thing happens. So a lot of people are afraid to speak out. I, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> Most of you out there know I'm too old to give a fuck anymore, so I just say whatever I want to say. But like I said, I don't think the uh, gun community is particularly racist. I don't think they're attracted to Trump because he's racist. I think it's because he was different. He was going after the people we see as the enemy of freedom in this country. He was doing things differently. And unfortunately, he got shut down, I will say. Pelosi and Schumer had no desire to work with him. They didn't want to look, they didn't want something to get done under a Republican administration. So they shut him down. And also people like Mitch McConnell, that sleazy little turtle, uh, also sabotaged him because they didn't want him reaching across the aisle because that's their bread and butter division. That's the only thing that keeps Americans from throwing all of them out of office is by keeping us divided, is them keeping us divided. That's the only thing that stops us from paying close enough attention to get rid of all of them. So he didn't want Trump seceding, neither did other leadership. So I think he was sabotaged a little bit. And unfortunately, because he is a businessman, he thought, well, who runs things better than CEOs? They run businesses, they can run the country. And unfortunately, a lot of the people he appointed were fucking corrupt. Who, who would have figured that, that out? A bunch of CEOs who bankrupt companies regularly or steal from their uh, investment accounts and their retirement accounts, et cetera, would be corrupt. But they were, and I think too much of that gets associated with Trump. But I think a lot of people, like I said, in the gun community, they like the fact that he did things differently, that he pissed off the other politicians, that he pissed off the press, that he did try to get things done, that he was very frank. And the things he said, you never had to wonder, okay, this is what he said, but what does he mean? Because he said what he meant. Even if it was wrong, you knew where you stood with him. And I think gun owners like that. They like honesty. Well, not all of them. Some people would much rather believe what they want to believe. Let's not say people, the gun community is honest, but I think there's a good uh, base core of the gun community that do appreciate honesty and straightforwardness, even if it's not what they want to hear. And if it is what they want to hear, then yeah, they like it even more. And I think that's what uh, attracted a lot of gun owners to Trump. I don't think it's got anything to do with racism. It doesn't have anything to do with hatefulness, and it doesn't even have anything to do with patriotism as far as I'm concerned. Because they all play the I'm a patriot thing. So there's no, there's not the anti-patriotism candidate. That's never been a thing really in this country. Uh, so that's what it is, I think. I think it's that he's kind of a rebel. He did things his own way. Now, did he eventually get shut down and fall victim to a, uh, a system that prevents people from being honest or different? Yeah, he did. Could it have been different if everyone would have stopped being politicians that were around him and said, hey, let's try it Trump's way for a while? I think things could have been a lot different. People like Stephen Miller and all those people wouldn't have ended up being the ones making decisions because Trump just, fuck it, I can't, I'm not playing the politics game. So let the politicians play the politician game. Uh, so it could have been a lot different. But I think that's, like I said, that's why gun owners like Trump. Uh, not all of us, like I'm saying, just a big chunk of us, but there's a big chunk of everyone that likes Trump. But I think what draws him to, what draws gun owners to Trump, it's got nothing to do with what that person said in my chat, which kind of irritated me. It's got everything to do with how he had the chance to be different and we had a chance to make changes. But unfortunately, the political beast was too powerful even for Trump and even his best intentions weren't enough. And unfortunately, he got pulled down into the mud a little bit himself. And that's just what happens to pretty much everyone who goes to uh, Washington, D.C. with an idea to be different or to actually get something done. They get shut down. And I think uh, a lot of people in the gun community understand that, too. We know what it's like to be right and to be standing up for what we believe in. 
and to constantly be facing a wave of resistance, even though we're right. So we associate well with that. And I think that is why so many people in the gun community have an affinity for Trump. All right, everybody, with that being said, I want to move on to my favorite part of the show, and that is, of course, gun talk. And today for gun talk, I want to answer a question from a viewer. They asked me, is the new Rock Island STK100 going to be the gun that finally is the Glock killer? And if you're not familiar with the Rock Island STK100, it's basically a Filipino Glock. Looks very much like a Gucci Glock. The biggest notable difference being that it has an actual aluminum frame instead of polymer, much like a SIG P320AXG, except it doesn't have grip panels as far as I know. And like I say, it's Filipino, it's from the Philippines. Now you might ask yourself, how can you tell a gun is Filipino? Well, usually you can tell because it's riding a Vespa scooter with seven other guns and a goat and carrying a baby. That's the easiest way to tell. But uh, like I said, this is a Filipino Glock. And they asked me, is it going to be the Glock killer? Well, the answer to that is no. I don't think it will be. Because there's no such thing as the Glock killer. Every time someone makes a new revolver, it's not the Smith & Wesson killer. And same thing when someone makes a new polymer gun. It's not the Glock killer. Because I hate to break it to you, even though these guns might be awesome, and everything I've seen about this gun so far has been positive, they still don't have the reputation and the real-world experience of a Glock. Glocks have been there, done that. They've proven themselves. Some new polymer gun isn't going to just suddenly kill them. Everyone likes Glock. And there's a certain, uh, I don't know, desirability to owning a Glock. It's kind of like, you know, how uh, the Kia Stinger is a fucking awesome car. But people aren't rushing out to buy them in droves because most people don't want to say, I own a Kia. People want to say, I own a Mercedes, a BMW. And even though the Stinger might be better than a lot of the BMWs, which it Here's a little secret, it is. People still don't want to say I have a Kia. They want to say I have a BMW. So it's kind of the same with these guns. How many people want to say I got a Rock Island? Blah, blah. No, nobody does. But is it a good gun? Yeah, it's probably a good gun. And there are a lot of people who don't care about the name and they'll buy it because it's a good gun. But it ain't going to kill Glock. Because like I said, not only does Glock have the reputation and the real world performance to back it up, but they also have that name recognition. And there's always going to be people who want a Glock. So nothing is going to kill them. And the, and the people who say, they need to evolve. No, they don't. They need to stay light, right? Like they are, because I want Glock to always be an option. I don't want Glock to become something else. That's like if you always liked the Ford Mustang and it was a muscle car and you loved that, you're a little depressed that it's becoming a sports car. Because there's no Mustang left, really. There's the thing that used to be a Mustang. Uh, and that's similar with Glocks. I don't want them to change. I want them to stay the same. I want them to always be there for the people who want them. And I think they will be. Because like I said, a lot of people love the name and they know they're proven. Now, will their market share become less and less? Well, of course. When they were the only polymer striker-fired gun in town, well, they controlled all the market. Well, the other gun manufacturers jumped into that market. So they're always getting a little less of the overall share each year. All it takes is a few people to buy a, this gun instead of a Glock and they lose a little of their market share. That doesn't mean they're still not doing very well. Still doesn't mean they're probably not the top, one of the top selling polymer guns. They're just not going to control the market forever. Eventually, other people catch up. And that's what's happened. The gun industry's caught up. A lot of manufacturers make polymer guns now. So they are going to lose market share, but I think they're always going to be a big part of the market. And they may have to adjust their business model a little bit to be a smaller part of the market, even though I think the market's growing. So they're still getting good sales, but I think they'll always be there. I don't think anything's going to kill them. Not the STK100, not the P320, not any gun. Nothing's going to kill the Glock because I think enough people appreciate the Glock enough and know how good of a gun it is that it'll always be there for people who want one. All right, everybody. I want to end the show today doing something I seldom do. Uh, I'm not a person who likes to sell things or even promote things because I, it's like work. 
I don't even work uh, promote my own channel very well. Uh, but today I kind of want to because we've been falling behind a little bit in some of our uh, performance. You know, YouTube has stopped recommending my videos, so my videos don't really make much money anymore. People are getting tired of live chats because we've been doing it for so long through the pandemic. Uh, so money's down, which is not a big problem. It's not a big problem at all. But we've dropped to a point now where we're no longer able to fully fund the programs we're doing, the TYM Triple P, the Pets and Vets Projects, etc., etc., uh, if you wondered how much money I made on YouTube this month, I can tell you, or last month, I can tell you it was negative $385. Because even though I made, pro, uh, you know, a few thousand bucks, didn't cover all the expenses after I sent out all the project guns, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to ask people to please go over and become a patron. I never tell people to go become a patron of my channel because it's, that's up to you. But if you've been thinking about it and you've just been putting it off, please go over, become a $1 patron, a $2 patron, a $5 patron, because we got about a $300 and something dollar shortfall we need to make up. I want to be able to continue to run TYM Triple P. I want people out there to continue to apply to TYM uh, Triple P. And I want to be able to keep doing the Pets and Vets programs where we do monthly donations to programs such as Weed for Warriors, Canines for Warriors, local ASPCAs, uh, all kinds of different groups we do donations to. We do uh, dog food donations to local shelters. We do donations to other people's local shelters, you know, where they live. And we do do special events from uh, time to time where we auction off some stuff to do something special, usually for a viewer whose dog has a medical bill or something like that. That's the whole point of why I keep doing this is to do the good stuff like that. So, but I need your all's help. It's been you all doing it all along. And the, I know times are rough. And that's one of the reasons a lot of people are leaving, like Patreon stuff. They're just like, I just can't afford it anymore. can't afford it anymore. And I'm not in any way shaming any of the people that leave because they just can't afford it anymore. Times are rough. And I, like, I'm not a televangelist. I'm not telling people to give till it hurts. If it hurts, don't give. But if you're someone, you know, can spare five bucks a month, ten bucks a month, whatever, you want one of the patches or the pins or whatever, go on over to Patreon, become a patron. They are not anti-gun. They work with me very well to do the things we do here. So go over, donate, become a patron. That's the best way to support the channel and the programs the channel supports. And like I say, I don't usually tell you to become a patron. I don't think it's my place to like beg for patronage. And I'm definitely not one of these gun channels that comes out and begs when I need a new camera or a new car or whatever. I'll pay for my own shit. Uh, but as far as running the programs, it's nice when they get covered. And I love to be able to do this for people. And there's a lot of people who come to my live chats who we've helped their dogs. We've helped their cats. Uh, we've helped different types of pets. We've donated to charities that they uh, love to support. We've even provided firearms for some of them. Because they apply to TYM Triple P. So please keep, uh, keep being a patron if you already are one. And if you're not one, you've been on the fence, but you've been thinking about it, please go do it. Because like I said, we've got a shortfall. Uh, I don't want to have to stop doing the programs we're doing because I love doing it. And I don't mind funding it a little bit out of my pocket every now and then, but it, I get in trouble if I do it all the time. Y'all are eating into my allowance. So, uh, not you all, the people that are getting the stuff. Uh, you all are funding it. <laughs> so, uh, you're the ones that make it all possible. Uh, I just wish there was a few more of you making it possible right now. And like I say, we're not a big shortfall. We're like $340 down a month. So anybody that can go out there and donate a little bit, it will help. It'll help keep this program running. It'll keep TY triple M, uh, TYM triple P running. It'll keep the Pets and Vets program running. I would love someday to get us back up to where we were, to where we can do handguns for heroes again. But right now I'm not worried about reinstating handguns for heroes. I'm just still worried about being able to do the friend drawing, uh, TYM triple P, pets and vets, etc. And like I say, we don't, we aren't that short. We're just a little short. So just a few extra uh, subs could really help. So like I said, if you've been considering it and you can afford it, please go over to Patreon. I'll put a link in the upper corner of this video. And there's also one in the description of the video. Go over, sign up. That's the best way you can help the channel. That's the way the channel gets the most of it. And join me in helping provide some people who need a means to defend themselves but can't afford it the means, and help save as many pets and aid as many veterans as we possibly can. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I want to just sign off as usual by saying, as far as the state of the world today is concerned, it is what it is. 
it could be a lot worse, but it could still be better. And if we continue to ignore the fear mongers, the profiteers, the fake advocates, the people who act like they're activists for the uh, Second Amendment and they're really just profiteers, if we ignore those people and keep level heads about us uh, and do what's right for our rights in this country, fight in a way we need to fight, what things will be for people who love the Second Amendment and freedom in general in the very near future is better. <music> <laughs>